On the eve of Halloween, I found myself in a predicament. I had yet to secure a costume for my annual Halloween party. And with a sense of urgency, I ventured from Halloween store to Halloween store. I was on my way home and about to just give up when I stumbled upon a new store. And it was no ordinary shop. It was a massive pop-up store known as the Midnight Monster Market. Inside, rows upon rows of costumes and masks greeted me, but none seemed very unique or creative. They all appeared rather mundane, lacking that spark of Halloween excitement. My disappointment grew until I spotted an obscure corner, dimly lit and shrouded in shadows. There, tucked away from the mainstream selections, I discovered it. The mask I had been searching for. It was a full head rubber jack-o'-lantern mask, grotesque and utterly mesmerizing. Its menacing grin and fiery eyes sent shivers down my spine. The accompanying black cloak hanging nearby appeared to be the perfect size. I wasted no time and went into the dressing room to try on this sinister costume. As I gazed at my reflection, fear mingled with excitement and I knew this costume would be perfect for my Halloween party. I decided to keep on wearing the mask and the cloak, donning them both as I made my way to the register. However, as I stepped out of the dressing room, an eerie realization overcame me. The store had transformed. The air grew colder. The lights dimmer and the once jovial music became distorted and low. My heart raced as I attempted to leave, only to find the front door sealed with heavy chains. Panic set in when the lights flickered and I heard an unsettling mechanical noise. The animatronic monsters, lifeless when I first entered, were now in motion. Their clunky movements were uncanny with an eerie, unnatural grace. I was trapped with these relentless creatures, and they appeared to have one goal, to kill me. My instincts forced me to flee, and I stumbled into a dark storeroom. The monsters followed, entering one by one. Their arms extended menacingly, groaning and growling with each and every step. Fear had paralyzed me. My breath came in short gasps as they closed in. With the monsters mere inches away, my desperation reached its peak. In a final act of sheer survival, I tore off the jack-o'-lantern mask to try to catch my breath. In an instant, everything changed. The dim lights returned to their full brightness. The haunting music reverted to its festive melody and the front door was no longer bound by chains. The customers and employees seemed to be completely unaware of my ordeal. I stood in the storeroom, gasping for breath, bewildered by the sudden transformation. The animatronic monsters had frozen in their tracks, their menacing postures replaced by a lifeless stillness. It was as if the mask had summoned the nightmare and removing it had banished the horror. Relieved, yet shaken, I emerged from the storeroom and made my way to the checkout counter, leaving behind the malevolent jack-o'-lantern mask. My little last-minute shopping trip had taken an unexpected and terrifying turn that night, one that would haunt my memories for many years to come. Unsurprisingly, I decided to host my party in my street clothes.